I'm kind of in the market for a Ferrari or a McLaren trying to decide. I really want a Koenigsegg. That's, that's what I really want, but I don't have the cash for that yet. We have a very special guest here at the facility today. A very special guest indeed. Who we got? Sometimes when we touch, the honesty's too much. Oh, the excite pee. There you go. Oh, yeah, nice. Odin, we got him, and he was eight pounds two weeks ago, and he is now 10 weeks old, and he's 20 pounds. He's a bull, a, a lab bully mix. Pro tip here to all my young baseball pitchers watching this, if you don't have a catcher, that's fine. It's actually better in some ways. You want to mix both, obviously you want to throw to a catcher too, but you can set up a tee like this that I have right here. You got a tee with a ball on it, and you got a smaller little thing here with a ball on it. If you're throwing a pen on your own, and you don't have a catcher, or even if you do have a catcher, it's good to mix this in sometimes, put a ball on one of those, you can throw off-speed pitches to the one that's down in the zone, below the zone. You can throw fastballs to the one that's in the zone. You can throw any pitch to either of them, but that's kind of how I do it. And you can mix fastball and you can mix off-speed. So today I'm mixing fastball and cutter. And you can bounce back and forth between trying to hit the two and it gives you really good feedback because if you actually hit your spot, you knock the ball off the tee. Plus it gives you a very, very, very specific target to lock your eyes on. Locking your eyes on the target is extremely important for command and for effectiveness. So this is how I throw all my bullpens in the off season. I prefer it to throwing to a catcher because I have a very specific focus and it makes me, uh, makes me lock in on that. So pro tip on that, back to the throwing. That's what you get, you hit it off the tee, you gotta go put it back on. It's a nice little humble brag too. So when you knock it off the tee and you have to walk down there, everybody watching knows that every time you walk down there, you drilled your spot. In addition to just bragging, it's actually, there's a really good reason to do that. So in a game, you don't just throw off the mound. You have to go cover first, you, you know, get a guy out, you have to wait 40 seconds in between at bats, guy has to tie his shoes, whatever the case is. So this breaks the flow of you being on the mound, so it forces you to lock back in for the very next pitch. I hit the ball off the tee, walked down there, picked it up, and I missed next time by like six feet with my next pitch, because I, I didn't lock back in very well. I didn't have the same feel and the same rhythm. So it forces you to practice that, which is a great thing too. So another reason why this drill is so good. All right, workout is done, which means I am done for the day, which is great. I'm off to get some food. Also, I think probably the Ferrari and McLaren dealerships are closed today. But tomorrow I will be stopping by both Ferrari and McLaren. And we will be seeing what kind of body styles they have because I am getting myself a new car for signing a free agent deal. I think that's fair since my last car got totaled. Ah, but tomorrow, tomorrow is the day that I get to shop for a new car and I can't wait. I'm on my way to Camelback Ranch for the first time as a Dodger doing intake testing for COVID today. Just got off the phone with one Rajay Davis. Uh, he works for the commissioner's office now. So we caught up a little bit about what his job is there and what his role is. And he's basically just trying to build relationships with players and bridge the gap between players and the league office, which is a good thing. Uh, he's the right guy to do it. Raj is one of the, the nicest guys, uh, like the funniest, nicest guys that I've met in baseball. So uh, I think he'll do great at that. And he wanted to talk about the sticky substance uh, issue in MLB and see kind of he's, he's polling players and seeing what players want uh, to be done about that uh, so he can deliver that information to the league. My recommendation, you have to level the playing field one way or the other. I think it's going to be impossible to regulate the rule because like, what are you going to check every inning, every every guy? Are you going to check inside a guy's pants or something like that if he's hiding something? Because you have two options, basically. You can either eliminate the rule so that everyone can use it so that you're on a fair playing field, or you can try to regulate the rule and make sure no one uses it so you're on a fair playing field. So you'd have to legalize it, in my opinion, to level the playing field, or come up with a ball that was sticky enough where guys uh, could get a grip on it without altering the, the flight of the ball. My suggestion is to legalize it uh, while you figure out how to make a tacky ball. My thought is that it's, it can't be that hard to get a machine that runs baseballs through automatically and sprays them with a, 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 subs, a substance called 
uh, firm grip or something similar anyway. And you do that an hour before the game and the substance lasts for you know, X amount of time. Uh, it doesn't seem that hard to, to do that without the leather getting soft because they've tried to make a sticky ball before, but uh, they injected stuff into the, into the leather and that didn't work because the leather got soft and the ball was squishy and pitchers didn't like throwing it and hitters didn't like hitting it. So it's nice that the league is worried about uh, baseball related stuff now instead of just COVID related stuff. Some sense of normalcy, I guess. All right, we are here. I'm gonna go spit in the tube and see what else I got for me today. Got some paperwork to fill out. Yep. All right. Testing is done for the day and I am going to get some, get my morning shake. I'm gonna put my level sensor on since I'm back in a consistent area now. We're getting back in the routine today. So once I get all that stuff done, then it's off to car shopping, which I couldn't be more excited for. Uh, just gonna go see what's available, what's on the market right now. Chalupa wanted to come along to car shop, so picked her up. Chalupa, where are we going? Ferrari. And why are we going to Ferrari? Turn left it's not as good as McLaren. We save the best for last. That's right. We came to the Ferrari dealership in Chalupa. All she wants to do is go look at the, uh, the G-Wagon over there. What's that? This is it. Okay, when you think about supercars, there's a couple that come to mind. It's Ferrari, it's McLaren. It's Lamborghini, but Lamborghini is completely out to me. I'm not a Lamborghini fan. I've always hated them. It's Porsche, eh, Ford GT, kind of think of that, or the Audi R8. So we got an Audi R8 here. This used to be my favorite car. When I first got into cars, the Audi R8 for about two years was my favorite car. But uh, it kind of reminds me of like a little bit of like a Bugatti sense. It's kind of bubbly for me right now. Not saying that I don't like it, I still do, but my tastes have evolved a little bit. I like a little bit more of a, like a slicker, a little more elegant lines, not as, not as like kind of rounded and bubbly. I'm kind of in the market for a Ferrari or a McLaren trying to decide. I really want a Koenigsegg, that's, that's what I really want, but I don't have the cash for that yet. Okay, so I'm looking for a Pista. I think this is the one over here. These cars are sweet. Just ran across a guy named Gary, who knows literally everything there is to know about Ferrari. Spent a while talking about the, uh, the benefits and detriments and specialness of all the different cars and, and all that. So it looks like what I'm interested in is a Pista but the Pistas are extremely rare and you can't get them unless you get them used because every Ferrari is built custom for a specific customer. So they have one Pista in there, it's beautiful. It's the, uh, it's the car with all the signatures on the back. So I got the story behind that and that those are all the people who built that car. I forget the guy's name, but he makes up his own paint for every Ferrari that he gets. And so that red, that like speckly, deep red is special made for that specific car. It's just so, so sick. Carbon fiber, everything. I just, I love this touch on the signatures on the back of the people who made it. That's just really cool. Uh, so that car has been accounted for, obviously. The car in front, uh, the piece that they have, the red, is for sale. So uh, I'm considering considering that one. So we're gonna go over and see what, uh, what McLaren has uh, in their lineup, but uh, the piece still looks pretty sick. So we get some 720s here. A couple things that I really like about this car. That air intake makes it really nice. Kind of combined with this air intake right here. So this makes like a really interesting like flow. Look at this thing. Yes. Yeah, you can see these like air filters right here. Sick aggressive air intake back here that I love. 
This might be the one. I'm in love. This, this aggressive air wing on the back is mm, not sure about this guy. <laughs> Shoots flames out of that. Pretty sick. I'm so fired up right now. They have two Koenigseggs here. I've never seen a Koenigsegg in person, and now I have. This is awesome. They got the new one, the Gamera, and they have the Jesco, which is the brand new. Oh my god, this thing is sick. Mean wings back here. And then here's the Gamera. I love this little ghost back here. What's the story on the uh, the cameras for rear view mirrors? Is that weight savings or is it just cameras? Yeah, are... uh, not weight, but uh, drag. Ah, aerodynamics. Yeah, yeah, it's about a uh, mirror stands for about two to three percent of total drag on a car. Really, that yeah. much? Yeah. So there's eight cup holders, four here, four back there. Oh if you put God. cold in here, it'll sense cold and it'll chill it. If you put hot in here, it'll sense hot and it'll heat it. And you can like go, you, you can't go anywhere with with your McLaren with like your friends, like a group of people. Oh yeah, if you roll up in this thing. Yeah. I, well, I would assume I have friends. Like <laughs> That's so cool. This is so freaking cool. This is so, so cool. This thing is freaking sick. <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm so happy right now. I'm definitely going to buy a Koenigsegg. I did not go in there expecting to buy a Koenigsegg, but I'm going to buy a Koenigsegg. Except Rachel's making me wait a night. I've earned the ability to be trusted when it comes to making decisions for you. Like I think so too. Like pacing you with making decisions. Uh, what are your takeaways from our time at the McLaren dealership, Chalupa? I love Koenigsegg. I had to text Tosh, tell him to come. Yep. What do you got, Tosh? I'm still speechless, but it is fate. Is that literally why you came here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He told, he texted me. He's like, hey, you got to see this. And I'm like, yes, I do. Four seater that's going to be like zero to 60 in under two seconds. I don't like when sports car companies go to like the four seater or the like SUV model stuff. And I completely had my mind changed. I'm okay being wrong when I'm wrong. And I was wrong. I'm buzzing right now. I feel great. All of my malaise from earlier today, my headache and everything gone. I'm on cloud nine put a down payment on the Coney Sag for my next contract and I'm not going to get a Roadster. Yeah. Well, the Roadster probably won't be out for another like five years anyway, so maybe that's my next next contract. Pat. Hey, Chalupa. Do you know anything about First Star Logistics? They're a company in Cincinnati that's sponsoring the vlog. Did you know they're a global shipping and logistics company that's dedicated to helping businesses do business? I did, now that you say it, and they would love to give people who are good at sales a job. Did you know that they're one of Cincinnati's fastest growing companies? I did, I did know that. I learned it from you though. Did you know that they also enjoy taking care of their people and they offer the highest commissions in the game? Pretty sweet, I did not. Fun, fast-paced work environment too, which, you know, you could you could utilize some of that. You could go on a little higher pace, right? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just abandon my job now. I mean, honestly, it would be my fallback job if it weren't for baseball. They're offering some big league cash too. I, mean, I know you could use some of that. Everyone could, right? I think you could use some of that. I could definitely use some big league cash. I might go check out uh, firststarlogistics.com and every member of the vlog should go check out firststarlogistics.com and tell them Trevor sent you. Or you can call 844-699-6747 and have a conversation. Now you're educated, Chalupa. Let's freaking go. Papa Bauer, Buster has approved, he's approved the Koenigsegg and the McLaren purchase. So that's the plan. We're gonna get a McLaren now to drive for the next couple years. We're gonna put a down payment on the Koenigsegg and it'll be ready in about three years, which will be my present to myself for signing my next contract. Then I have to I have to pitch well and get another good contract. So that's the plan cleared by Buster. So we are full steam ahead, McLaren and Koenigsegg, and I am pumped about that. Yes. Time to build another mound. I'm still buzzing from uh, my dad approving my uh, my expenditures for my cars. Text the guy at McLaren, like, hey, what do you got for me? What are the next steps? So now we're gonna build a mound. Then 
tonight I got dinner with Sonny Gray, which I'm pumped for. So I'm hungry, but I'm not going to eat until dinner. So mound first, then eat. Okay, time to go get dinner. I'm starving. I didn't think that this place might be nice. Like, I assumed it was going to be, I guess, in my head, but I never thought that that means I need to dress differently. So I'm probably gonna be completely underdressed for this. This is gonna be great. But uh, I'm excited to see Sonny. I haven't seen Sonny since the end of last year. One of my favorite dudes, so this will be fun. Right, Enjoy. thank you. What is up, dude? What up, baby? Good for you. Looks good. Awesome. I got a seared dynamite scallop mocky roll. Sit that right there. Right. And then we're just waiting on our 12 ounce filet, right? Boom. I'm gonna go check on it, see yep. where it's at. That's Brussels, the Brussels potatoes. potatoes. Justin's gonna get you some spoons, salmon avocado roll, and dynamite scallop yeah. roll there. Let's go, it looks delicious. <sighs> I am full, sufficiently fed. That was delicious. Um, <laughs> Love getting to chat with Sonny, had two and a half hour dinner. Uh, as much as I love food and I love Sonny, he does not love the camera, so uh, didn't want to film a whole lot of it out of respect to him, but always great catching up with him. I love Sonny, hopefully we get to play together, play together again at some point before our respective careers are over. But uh, stuff's going well in Reds camp, stuff's going well in Dodgers camp, and good to see old friends. So and I'm headed home to get some sleep because I need it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is officially report day. Uh, pitchers and catchers for the Dodgers anyway are reporting today. Uh, we're on our way to Camelback Ranch right now and we'll see what we get, but I'm excited because it's the first day of camp. Officially the first day of camp. Okie doke, let's see where I'm gonna go. We got a purple car in the lot. Look at that, with green. Purple car, green wheels, very Joker-esque. Okay, I gotta find the front entrance because I'm not allowed to go in any other entrance. So I think that's over here. I'm gonna get you eventually. I'll walk, I'll walk faster. Yeah. 